This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, we're now going to look at chapter 21 of the free lecture notes, which is combining capital asset pricing model and Medigliani and Miller. Medigliani and Miller, you'll remember, they had uh, their theories of gearing, the effect of gearing on the business, whereas capital asset pricing model is looking at the, the business risk, the risk due to the actual nature of the business. And if you think back, uh, gearing made a business more risky. You see, any business is risky, the risk of the profits fluctuating. If there is gearing, so there's the fixed interest payable, the risk to the shareholders, the risk of the dividends, um, is even greater. Well, the, in Capital Asset we have betas. The betas that are published are what we call the beta of equity, uh, the, the beta of shares, and they measure the risk of a share, and remember a share Shares are more risky when there's gearing than if there's no gearing. And what might be useful, you'll see here with examples in a moment, is to have a measure of the risk if there was no gearing at all, the pure business risk. And that's called the asset beta. Is the beta of the business if there was no gearing. So potentially with two betas, you see, if there's no gearing at all, the only risk is due to the nature of the business, the way the profits fluctuate. And the measure of that risk is known as the asset beta. However, shares, when it's a geared company, shares become even more risky because of the fixed interest. Um, and the beta of shares measures the total risk due to the nature of the business as increased by the level of gearing. And there is a formula relating, to, relating the two together uh, which looks awful it's given you on the formula sheet, uh, and I've printed it there. The Well, let me write it and then be clear what the symbols are. BA is VE over VE plus VD, 1 minus T, uh, beta E plus VD over VE plus VD, 1 minus T beta d, which as I say looks awful, but in fact as you'll see it turns out to be not quite as bad as it may seem. Uh, ba is this asset beta, the beta uh, of the business itself ignoring any gearing. Beta e is the equity beta the beta of a share in the business, when remember a share is more risky because of gearing. Beta D is what we call the debt beta, which measures the riskiness of the debt. Uh, now, uh, debt in a company, I've said several times in the previous lectures, uh, debt is much less risky for investors than equity. And so the measure of riskiness, the beta of debt, would be a lot lower. Well, in the exam, we always assume, just for this formula, we assume debt is risk-free. And surely from what I said in the capital asset chapter, um, if debt has no risk, zero risk, then the debt beta is zero. And so and if ever you're using this formula in the exam, and I know this sounds a bit silly, uh, 
Well, although the whole formula is given on the formula sheet, if you're ever using it in the exam, this formula, we assume debtor is free, and if the debt beta therefore is zero, all of that disappears, which simplifies the formula a lot. Now, finally, VE and VD. VE is the uh, total market value of equity. Uh, VD is the total market value of the debt in the company. And T is the tax rate. And in fact, it's all a bit strange that this formula uh, comes from Midigliani Miller's formulae. I told you in the Midigliani Miller chapter you're not that Midigliani Miller came up with formulae for the cost of equity, uh, which isn't in the syllabus and can't be examined. This formula, though, in fact, comes from Midigliani and Miller, and this can be examined. And let me show you uh, the two ways in which you can be tested on it. First of all, look at example one. P has a gearing ratio, debt to equity, of 0.4, and the beta of its shares is 1.8. Q is also a geared company. Its gearing ratio is 0.2. And the beta of its shares is 1.5. Uh, tax is 30%. Well, part A says, which is the more risky share? Well, the beta of the shares measures the risk of the shares. And so the riskiness of shares in P, 1.8 times as risky as the market. Uh, for Q, the shares are 1.5 times as risky as the market. And so, um, P is the more risky share. Uh, because 1.8 is greater than 1.5. However, the problem is that P's uh, share beta, equity beta, 1.8, is measuring the total risk of the share. And one of the reasons it's so risky is because there's gearing. Gearing makes the shares more risky, and its gearing is 0.4. Q has a lower share beta, but one of the reasons the beta is 1.5, uh, one of the reasons it's that risky is because of its gearing. Gearing makes a share more risky. But part B says, which is the more risky business? And so to determine that, what we want to do is say, well, what would the, um, the betas be of the two companies if there was no gearing at all? Because if there was no gearing, the betas would be lower. And if there was no gearing, those betas would measure the risk of the actual business itself. How can we do it? Well, we've got that formula. Again, then I've got it in front of me. Uh, the asset beta, which is measuring the risk of the business itself, which is what we want, is equal to VE over VE plus VD1 minus T times the equity beta, the share beta. Well, uh, if we do it for P first, Obviously, we know what the share beta is. It's 1.8. I want to know what the asset beta is. The beta if there was no gearing. Um, I said VE and VD. Uh, they are the market values of debt and equity. And if I did know the total market values, I'd use them. You know, if, we, if you were told that equity, the total market value was 5 million, debt was 2 million. Fine, we'd use those figures. Here we're not told, but we are told the ratio of debt to equity. And if you think about it, this formula is effectively a ratio. And so since we're not given the actual market values, what I always do is set up a little picture. 
equity debt. Now surely, um, since the gearing ratio debt to equity is 0.4, it means for every 100 equity, debt must be 0.4 of the equity, debt would be 40. So there's the ratio, and I don't really care whether the total market values are 100,000 and 40,000, or a million and four million, or 280, because it's simply the ratio that's relevant in the formula. And if we stick it in the formula, beta acid, the risk of the business itself without gearing, um, the e, uh, equity 100 over equity 100 plus debt 40 times 1 minus the tax rate. Here the tax rate is 30%, point 0.3, 1 minus that, 70%, point 0.7. It's that times the equity beta, the equity beta, the share beta, is 1.8. And what does that come to? It's 100 divided by 128 times 1.8 to two decimal places is 1.41. As I say, usually we leave it to two decimal places unless you're told to do otherwise. And does that make sense? Yes, it does. That's measuring the risk of the actual business, if there was no gearing at all. As far as the share's concerned, there is gearing. That makes it, for shareholders, it makes it more risky. And the risk of the shares is higher at 1.8. However, that's the risk if there was no gearing. Similarly, what about Q? Uh, Q's gearing is different, it's 0.2. So for every 100 equity, see if the ratio is given as debt to equity, the debt must be 100, uh, 20 rather. And so again, let's use the formula. For Q, the asset beta, equity 100 over 100 plus debt 20, again times 0.7, 1 well minus the tax rate times Q's equity beta, share beta, 1.5. And so what would Q's beta be if there was no gearing? 100 divided by, that bit is 114, times 1.5, I get 1.32. And that's the measure uh, of Q's business risk. And so here, uh, the question said, which is the more risky business? And in fact, P is the more risky business. Uh, because 1.41 is greater than 1.32. But of course, you know, when you strip out the gearing, even though P is the more risky share, it could have ended up with Q being the more risky business. So that's one way uh, the formula can be, you can be tested on the formula and appreciate not just the arithmetic, I don't think the arithmetic's too bad, but do appreciate the significance. It's the beta of the shares that is normally published. Betas are always betas of shares, unless you're told differently. But again, one of the reasons the beta is as high as it is, is because of gearing. If we want a measure of the riskiness of the business itself, we need to take out the gearing effect. What would the beta be if there was no gearing? We call that the asset beta. Uh, the second uh, way it can be asked, though, is something called a project-specific beta. Uh, look at example two. 
Anks PLC is an oil company with a gearing ratio, again here, debt to equity of 0.4. Shares in X have a beta of 1.48. We're considering investing in a new operation to build ships. Now, I appreciate X at the moment is an oil company, but they're going to invest in an operation to build ships. Well, I mentioned in the previous chapter, shipbuilding is likely to have a completely different level of risk to what they're currently doing. And when we come to um, look at this new operation, we need to know how risky shipbuilding is. Uh, shipbuilding may be more risky, may be less risky, but it's the riskiness of shipbuilding that will determine the return that we require. And how are we going to know? I said again in the last chapter, how do we know what the riskiness of a project is? Well, the only way we can do it is to look for a quoted company that builds ships. And we found one. We found a quoted shipbuilding company, YPLC. Uh, y has a gearing ratio of 0.2, and the shares in Y have a beta of 1.8. Now, why am I interested? I want to know the riskiness of shipbuilding, my project. I found a, a quoted company that does shipbuilding and see how risky that company is. Because whatever the level of risk that company has, presumably that's the risk for our new project. Now, the only problem is that the shares in this shipbuilding company have a beta of 1.8, but that company, Y, is a geared company. And I want to know the riskiness of shipbuilding. I need to take out the gearing effect. So the first thing we do, let's take our similar company, which is Y, and to find uh, the riskiness of shipbuilding, we'll calculate the asset beta. Again, we've got our formula. Beta asset is VE over VE1 plus 1, no, no. VD1 minus T times beta E. Well, we know what beta E is for company Y. Company Y has a B, it shares of a beta of 1.8. And what gearing we're going to use to get the asset beta? Surely company Y. It's company Y's gearing that has made company Y's share beta as high as it is. So what is the gearing in company Y? Company Y, its ratio of debt to equity is 0.2. So for every 100 equity, debt must be 20. And so, what's the asset beta for shipbuilding? Uh, 100 over 100 plus. 20 times, what's the tax rate? Ah, here the tax rate is 25%, 0.25, 1 minus T, 75%, 0.75, uh, times the equity beta of 1.8. And so, uh, what does that come to? 100 divided by uh, 115, 115 times 1.8, it comes to 1.57 if I keep it to two decimal places. So what's that? That is the riskiness of shipbuilding. Our new project is shipbuilding and so there is the measure of the riskiness of our project. Now, in the previous lecture, I gave you the uh, beta for our project, and we said, ah, oh, if it's all being financed by equity, then 
The riskiness of that project determines the return we need to get for the shareholders. We would simply use the ordinary capital asset formula to calculate the return needed for a beta of 1.57. However, this says calculate the project specific cost of equity. And as far as your exam's concerned, we would always assume that if company X, and it's company X is who's doing the investing in the project, we assume that if they're currently geared, that they will continue to keep the same level of gearing, i.e. that the new project, it'll be financed to keep the same gearing as we currently have. So we assume for paper nine, F nine rather, that the new project will be geared in the same as the current gearing ratio of the company. Now remember, it's company X who's doing the investing. We know the new project has a risk of 1.57, but we assume that it's being financed in such a way as to keep the gearing ratio uh, the same as it currently is in X. And what is X's gearing? X's gearing Their ratio is 0.4, so for every 100 equity, the debt, 0.4 of it, the debt will be 40. And what I want to know, our new project, we treat it effectively as though it's a little company all by itself. Uh, and what we want to know is, Given that equity are providing most of the money, what return would shareholders need if they're investing in a project with a beta of 1.57, but there is gearing? Because it's the company that's investing shareholders' money, but they're investing the shareholders' money in a geared project as though they're investing in a little geared company. And so, treating the project as though it's a little company, how do I work out what return shareholders will need? I'll work out what the beta would be of a share in a little geared company. And I'll use the formula again. Beta asset equals VE over VE plus VD1 minus T, V to E. But this time, again, treating my project as though it's a little company, we know what the asset beta is. We know what the riskiness of shipbuilding itself is. It's 1.57. What I want to know is how risky is a share in that company because then we can determine what return will be needed for shareholders uh, investing in that project. And the gearing we use, it's X's gearing because we're assuming that's how the project's being financed. And so let's do it. The beta acid is 1.57. It's equal to VE 100 over 100 plus uh, VD 40 uh, times 1 minus the tax rate, which remember is 25%. So 1 minus T is 75 times beta E. And so we're going to use the formula effectively backwards. 
1.57 is equal to 100 divided by 100 plus, well, that's 30. 0.76923 beta e. And therefore, dividing both sides by 0.769, uh, 1.57 divided by 0.76923. To two decimal places is 2.04. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. The uh, beta of shipbuilding itself is 1.57, but a share in that project, given it's a geared project, a share in it will be more risky because of the gearing, the beta will be higher. And therefore, what return do shareholders need on their money that's invested? It's the ordinary capital asset formula that the required return is the risk-free rate, which in this question is 8%, plus beta, and the beta for a shareholder here is 2.04 times the market premium. The market's giving 18, the risk free 8. And therefore, what's it come to? 10 times that's 20.4. 20 28.4%. That's the return that shareholders will be requiring from the money. That their money that's being invested in the project, project specific cost of equity. <coughs> uh, now, two things. First of all, that's as far as it goes at paper F9. Uh, when you come to later papers or paper P4, uh, then we end up working out a weighted average cost of capital for the project and going a lot further. Uh, I've mentioned there, what happens if it's all financed by debt? Well, all of that is at P4. At paper F9, that's the most that can be asked. Um, secondly, you wouldn't be asked to do any discounting on it. You couldn't possibly ask to discount at 28.4%. It's not in the tables. It would purely be calculating this, what we call project-specific cost of equity. The cost of equity in relation to shareholders' money invested in this project. So, there we are. That's now everything to do with uh, Bidigliani Miller Capital Asset Price Model. I say that formula that I've been using here yeah, is strictly a Bidigliani Miller formula, but as far as the exam is concerned, that's irrelevant. But think carefully about that. Make sure you are clear the distinction between asset beta and equity beta. Asset beta ignores the gearing, equity beta will be higher because gearing makes things more risky. Uh, and make sure you can go from one to the other. That um, in example one, if you know the equity beta, you can calculate the asset beta. But similarly, the second bit of example two, that you can go backwards. If we know the asset beta, then for any level of gearing, we can work out the equity beta.